Hello and welcome back to another video. This one's all about the subframe, getting this rebuilt with all the parts I've been refurbishing and getting it back into the MG. Now this has been sat outside for a couple of months under a somewhat rainproof cover and it's actually fared really, really well. It's still really clean and there's no rust anywhere, so quite pleased with the Hammerite so far. Now for no real reason, I think I'm going to rebuild this in the reverse order to the strip down video that I did. Um, there's a link up there to watch that if you've not seen it already. So I think I'll start with the lower control arm first and work my way up and kind of fill the gaps as I go along. Right, so one of the first things you want to check is that you're on the right side of the subframe. So on the control arm, it does actually say L for left, and this is the left-hand side of the subframe, so we know we're correct there. Before I go any further, I do want to give a massive shout-out and thanks to Alan, a viewer who got in touch, because when I took the low control arms off originally, one side was okay, and I could save that, but the other side was completely shot. Um, so we offered some that he'd taken off, and I think he said they were off an MGF, or certainly an old vehicle than the one I've got here, but they were still in much better condition than the ones I took off. So whether this is just had a hard life or whether earlier model f's and maybe even tf's were somehow better built i don't know okay so before i go any further i'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the insides of these bushes just to help them go in because it is quite a snug fit just a little bit And then we've got a 19 mil bolt front and back. To make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to be using a Milwaukee Impact just to nip the bolts up and then I'm going to go in with a torque wrench. So when tightening these bolts up, they need tightening down to 85 newton meters, but at trim height. So it has to, this, this control arm has to be horizontal because that's where it would sit normally with the weight of the car on it. Um, you'll notice when I undid these, when I took them off in my undoing video, just up there, um, they dropped as soon as I undid these. So because it's quite a tight fit at the minute, it's going to hold itself there and I can nip these up with this and then tighten them down to the correct torque. Right, I think I'll do the subframe mounts now, uh, starting with the rears. Right, so here we've got an 18 mil bolt and a 21 mil nut, which goes on the back. I will be putting some thread lock on the threads of these bolts as I go along as well, just to. Make sure they don't come loose unnecessarily. So this needs tightening down to a hundred newton meters. So as I tighten this, 
it's obviously turning which I don't want it to do this needs to remain pretty much flat otherwise when you mount it to the car these aren't going to fit flush with the underneath so let's re rethink this so to try and keep this level I'm just going to lift the subframe slightly and just put two nuts underneath So for the front subframe mounts, it's pretty much the same sort of thing as the back ones. You've got a 90mm bolt with a 21mm nut, and they just go on the front here. Now I did replace these because the old ones were in such a poor state, it's amazing the subframe stayed on the car at all. So new ones going on on the front. Right, so before I go any further, I think I'm going to flip the subframe before I add any more weight to it. This way I can add the anti-roll bar. Right, so when I originally took off the anti-roll bar, it came off with these standard bushes. Now I am going to replace them with some polyurethane ones, which should give it a more responsive feel, I'm hoping. Now, the original ones did have a a cut on one side so that you could get the anti-roll bar in and out and the new ones don't have that but there is a line on one side which suggests at least to me that's where it should be cut so that's the first thing I'm going to do So I have used the original anti-roll bar and it's had the usual treatment of being ground back to bare metal with a coat of the Hammerite paint. Now, this isn't seated all the way to the bottom. I'm not too worried because I'm hoping that when this is clamped down and tightened up it's going to pull it all nice and true. These are 10 mil bolts, by the way, and they need tightening down to 22 Newton meters. Right, so before I go and tighten these down properly, I'm going to install the, the anti-roll bar links, which I did have to buy new because I had to cut the old ones off there in such a bad way. Um, and these connect the anti-roll bar to the lower control arm just here. So I'm going to put those on first and then I'll tighten everything down together. So I'm just going to nip these up and we've got a 13 mil bolt with a 15 mil nut. Right, so with everything now sort of nipped up slightly, I am going to torque it all down. Now it is important that the, the lower control arm is at trim height. This is something the manual says it should be at and that's pretty much at the position it would normally be at if it was on the car with the wheels on and the weight of the car on the subframe and that's pretty much 90 degrees horizontal to the subframe which mine is so i'm first going to talk down the anti-roll bar links and then i'm going to talk down the anti-roll bar brackets so the links themselves are 35 newton meters and the brackets are 22. Hmm. <sighs> 
Quick top tip, before you go any further, double check the gap between the anti-roll bar links and the lower control arm because the gap here should be the same on the other side. And if it isn't, your anti-roll bar is off to one side, like mine was. Right, so I'm now gonna get the upper control arm back into the subframe. Now you can watch the refurbishment of this upper control arm in the pop-out banner up there. Um, and some of you noticed I was a little bit premature as I've assembled this, reassembled this, regreased it off the subframe when I actually now need to unassemble it to get it back in. But hey ho, you live and learn. Now one doing this sucker should be pretty straightforward. Nut. Now you don't need to be careful where you put this down as you don't want to get this dirty. Right, so you notice on the right hand side I've still got the, the seal and the um, thrust washer still in place but on the other side I have still got the seal but no thrust washer, that's still on the shaft. It's a little bit snug but it should just go in without much problem, just do watch your seals. It'd probably help if you had a little bit of grease on the inside of here. I do need to be a little bit mindful about the seal. It's going to want to try and work its way free, but without too much pressure, you just want to work it back into place with your fingers. So all we do now is slide the shaft back in. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to tighten it up at that, I am going to take this off and double check that that thrust washer is properly seated inside the hole of the subframe. <laughs> I was wondering where it was then, there it is. <laughs> the good thing about having all this re-greased is that stuff sticks to one another, which can be helpful. So you see, that isn't good enough. That needs to be pushed all the way in. All right, so now I need to put back the two bolts that go in here. Now the ones I took off the car originally were no good. They were rubbish. So I'm just replacing them with some high tensile uh, bolts. On the inside of here is a captive nut, so there's no nut to go on the back here. But on the other side, I'll need to add a nut on the other side. So these two bolts will need tightening up to 10 newton meters. And the two 19 mil nuts will need tightening down to 74 newton meters. It is important to talk down both sides as well. Right, on with the suspension. So this is the original spring and um, dampener that was taken off the car that I refurbished and you can watch the video of me doing that on the pop-out banner above just there. Um, I was a little confused in that video because when I took the suspension off originally, only one of these bump stops came with it. Uh, and the book and the manual that I was following suggested that there should be two and some eagle-eyed viewers did spot that there was one of them already left in the subframe that I hadn't taken out so well done for spotting that so first thing I need to do is take the old one out okay so I need to undo the top knot take off the washer and the top bushing ah. so the top one goes just in there and the one here goes up on the inside Good. so washer on and I'm just going to put the nut on just so it holds it 
should pull itself all nice and straight and true in a bit. Right, so now I need to put the bottom of the suspension strut into that recess in the upper control arm and then the bolt should go straight in. So this is a 7, no it's not, this is a 15 mil bolt. Now, this bolt is another one of those trim fit bolts, so you can't tighten this down to the correct torque setting yet until um, the weight of the car is on it, the wheels are on and everything. This is 100 newton meters, so this is just nipped up for now and I'll tighten it up properly when it's back on the car. The top nut we can torque down and that is to 45 newton meters. Right, on with the wheel hubs. Now you may have noticed that the subframe has moved this way slightly. And what I've been doing is I've, I've hung the lower control arm over the edge and pushed it down as, as much as I can to give me enough room to get the wheel hub in. So, here we go. Now you wanna make sure this is seated far enough down that you can actually get the bolt through So I can't knock this hub down any further without some support underneath the lower control arms. This only talking down to 54 newton meters. Now you may have noticed that the ABS sensor is already attached to the hub. Now I had a nightmare getting these off originally. Um, the bolt that was originally here, just the head just snapped clean off, which left the rest of the bolt inside. Now I did manage to get them off. Um, but I made a right mess trying to drill out what was left of the, the knackered bolt in there. So a lot of you suggested for many of the projects on the car that I get a, a tap, a thread tap in set, which I did do, and I'll include a link in the description below to the one that I did buy, because it's, it's fantastic, it's brilliant. I've not just used it to clean threads up, I've used it to create new threads in the hub in particular. So now these have got two bolts in as opposed to one and a bit of a plastic lug, so that's not going anywhere. You work with what you got? So I bought new upper ball joints, uh, it comes with, actually it didn't come with the washer, I had to buy that separately. I think I bought this off eBay um, and I got the washer from Rimmer Brothers. Uh, so what we got, we got a washer, we got a nut, a lock nut, and then the upper board joint itself. So washer on first and then the upper board joint. All right, so this needs tightening down to 105 newton meters. Now on the washer, you'll need to knock down one side and on the opposite side, knock it up. So it helps prevent the, uh, the ball joint from working its way loose. Right, now I need to get this upper ball joint into the upper control arm. So I think what I'll try and do is drop it over the side of the, the worktop and push it down as much as I can. I'll try and get it in that way. Ooh, there's some weight in it now. Now the top of this nut has a, a hexagonal 
bit bit to go in there so that as you tighten it up it doesn't turn to and twist and damage this bit so that's what we now need to do all right according to the bit i am using this is an s2 or 5h that will go in there so i'm going to use that to hold it while i tighten it up with a 19 mil spanner Right, so I've just talked that down to 54 newton meters. And now for the, uh, the arm lever which connects the steering rack to the hub. Right, having just done these lever arms, I think what I'll do now is put the steering rack on and connect all that up. Right, so I haven't actually done anything to the steering rack, it's in decent condition, with the exception of the track rod ends, which I'll need to replace uh, at a future date. So there's actually only two brackets to go on here. One on the right is a U-bolt, and one on the left is a, a little bit more to it, so I think I'll do that one first. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the bracket around the steering rack first and then pass that top bolt through put the nut on the other side and that should keep it in place while I do everything else up right that's that on now for the U-bolt on the other side. Okay, so with those both nipped up, it's 13 mil socket and 22 newton meters on both. Okay, so now I just need to connect both the track rod ends to the lever arms on the hubs that we put on a minute ago. And it's a 17mm uh, nut on these. These get torqued down to 50 newton meters. Awesome. Right, only a couple of things left to fit now, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna fit these crash cans next. There's two of these that go on the front. There's three bolts that go in each and they all get tightened down to 45 newton meters. So this nut wasn't going in very well. In fact, it was going in at a bit of an angle, so I've taken it all off and I'm cleaning the threads with that new Amazon purchase, which is brilliant. Right, so pretty much the last thing to go back on is the front splash guard. Now 
And when I originally took this off, I made a bit of a dog's dinner trying to get it off and it just wouldn't come off. So it looks a bit gnarly, but I am replacing the bolts with some, uh, some eight mil bolts. Ooh, right, I think it's actually time to get it on the floor and get it in the car, but it is quite heavy. Right, so the, the whole subframe isn't going to be able to be slid right the way under because these pillars are in the way, they're going to foul on the chassis. And when I took this out, I had to kind of work it backwards and forwards to get it around these. So that's exactly what I'm going to do to get it back in. So I need to pull it this way, get it around this one first, push it back that way and do the same on the other side. Right, because this is on this piece of wood, it's sitting a little bit too high, so I'm gonna to have to drop it off this wood to get it any further around. Right, I've got it under. I'm gonna put the piece of wood back underneath as I, as I think that's gonna help me to raise it. Right, so to raise this up so it can uh, meet the mounting points and I can start to get the, the bolts in, I think I'm gonna use a combination of a jack and some axle stands. I'll lift one side up, put some axle stands underneath, jack the other side up, raise it slightly, do the same that side, until hopefully it can get this all the way up to here. All right, before I go any further, I can see that the water coolant pipes need passing down through the subframe, so I'll do that now. So it's just about there. I think it's close enough for me to get some bolts in. So that is all of the mount bolts loosely in. Hopefully that's enough to hold the weight of the subframe as I lower and get rid of this board. Open. Okay. Right, so with that back in, I'm gonna go around and tighten up the remaining bolts. It's 45 newton meters on the rear uh, bolts and it's 30 on the front. Um, there is the cross brace to put in at the same time, so I'm gonna be doing it all together. So this cross brace has been ground back and had a light coat of paint. And I'm gonna put it on the same way it came off, or the same configuration. So this is the rear of the subframe and it's got these holes and this is the front of the subframe, it's got these ovals and then it kind of overlaps in between 
I think I'm going to put the centre bolt in first and then that way it should hold the rest to make it easier for me. Well, that's the theory anyway. Yeah, so this does actually need to go above the anti-roll bar, which is no problem. I'm sure we can just feed that through. So now I need to reconnect the, the coolant hoses to the solid center pipe. And don't worry, these will be replaced in a future episode, but for now, I'm just getting reconnected. Now I need to take the battery positive lead and feed it back up through the subframe into the front. But as I do it, I do need to clip this back onto the subframe. set this up out of the way now I need to do the uh, the washer reservoir I need to put that back Right, so I'm now going to fit the brake calipers and there's two bolts to hold this on and they need tightening down to 85 newton meters. So now I just need to connect up the ABS sensors and the brake hose. So I'm going to be fitting the brake hose to the caliper and to the rest of the system and when I refit this bolt, I'm going to be fitting it with two new copper washers as well. And this needs tightening down to 30 newton meters. Doesn't matter which way round up those go. So it's not that way. Yeah, it's that way. Now the bolt and the brake lines themselves aren't in great condition, I must admit. So We'll see what happens when it comes to MOT time, but I can see this being a future upgrade. The lines and perhaps um, four pot calipers, we'll see. Let's pop in the ABS sensor lead. And 
feed that up. So I think if I remember rightly it went under the brake lines and then attached into this bracket here connecting into this push plug here so there is an o-ring on here so you want to make sure that's a there and b in a decent condition that just goes back in there and then you've also got this little bit of a it's not quite a tie wrap but a fixing plastic fixing which goes in the hole just in there Right, so I've put the fuse box back. I've now fitted the ABS sensor, which goes just underneath there. Uh, and I'm now, I've fed the positive lead through into the fuse box. I need to reconnect that. Just one more thing before I forget, which I did do. Um, there is a bracket which goes on the brake caliper, uh, which holds the ABS sensor lead. You'll need to make sure that that's on before uh, you tighten everything up. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't until a little while later that I, I hadn't realized uh, the audio hadn't been recorded on this bit. I hadn't plugged in a lead into the, the new wireless audio recorder I was using. But essentially what I'm doing is fitting the wheels to the car and lowering it to the ground so I can get the weight of the car onto the subframe and the suspension components so that later on I can torque down the, the few bolts that I haven't torqued down yet um, to their trim torque setting, if you like. Um, I can also attach the steering column to the steering rack as well. Okay, so what I've not realized is that the steering column connects to the steering uh, rack in a particular way. Uh, there's a cutout on the, the pinion thing that comes through and it has to fit on in the right way. So I've had to turn the front wheels by hand, which was actually quite easy. Um, and so what I'll do is connect it, turn it back to centre and see if the steering wheel matches the front wheels. So there we've got a stud coming through just up there, got another one just down here, and then one up on the left there. So then you need to connect him first, and then the bolt goes, well, I'll push this down, and then pop the bolt in there. Right, so I've had a right nightmare trying to get this bolt in. And it turns out all it was is this it only pretty much goes in one end this end and i was feeding it in through the other end because it was turned around so if it doesn't go in easily then you like that then you're probably feeding it in the wrong end like i was so this this bolt gets torqued down to 22 newton meters and the outside three get torqued down to eight Right, so with that done, I just need to tighten up the trim bolts that I spoke about earlier and also the axle nut. And I think that might be it. It is tight, but I can get in here and, and torque these bolts down. So I'm going to start with the anti-roll bar links and then work my way up. So it's 35 newton meters on the bottom. It's 100 newton meters on the dampener lower bolt. So I'm just checking that these upper ones are upper bolts are tight. Right, so those trim fit bolts are torqued down. So the last bolt to do, I think, is the uh, the axle nut, which is a whopping 210 newton meters and a 32 mil socket. Right, I advise you put your handbrake on for this. Uh. Uh. 
another milestone complete. Now, I do apologize. This video has taken a lot longer than my usual videos. It's just been such an involved job. There's lots I filmed that didn't go into the video. There's lots I did that didn't get filmed and go into the video. So it was just really involved. I think the most annoying thing of the project, the most complicated thing or, or tedious was the steering rack. Just getting that connected and all lined up was such a pain because the, the space to work with is really uh, tight, but got there in the end. Now I've not included the brake side of things. I've not done the bleeding of the brakes or putting the discs on or anything like that because I'm going to start a new playlist where uh, I review products and maybe some other playlist tools and whatnot. Um, and I'm going to use a one person brake bleeding kit to, to do this, um, which is by Gunson. So this should make bleeding the brakes a lot easier. It's a one person brake bleeding kit. Um, all you do is, I think, connect it up to a, a tire and then it should make things easier. I don't know, everything on this box is in French. So that'll be in a future video, maybe the next video. Um, but now I'm working my way back to the engine, ready for MOT time, which I'm hoping is gonna be in the, within the next month or so. Um, so I've got to work, I've got to finish the panel here, get the rust off of that. I will need to work on the rust on the sills here. And then I've actually got some holes in the sill here, which is structural and therefore an MOT failure. So I need to, sort that out and then there's a couple of bits in the engine um, bay to finish off and then that should be it however there's one more thing to do um, i'll need to drain the fuel out of the tank it's been sat in there for a year at least a year um, and that will have gone stale so i don't want to run that through all the, the fuel lines and, and and the engine um, it'll be like running oil through it so i need to drain or siphon that out put some new in and then put a battery in it and fire it up so once again, thank you so much for watching. If you did like anything I, I did in this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing if you've not already done so. And I'll see you in the next one.